<laughs> yeah, Ronald. Well, I mean, the funny thing is, Ronald, that um, I would have, in principle, been okay with uh, starting a family with someone who wasn't, like, pure white. Like, it's not a high priority for me. If they were, like, Latino or, or, or maybe even uh, uh, some, like, black race, like Italians. But no, if, if they were, like, you know, it's pretty much no race where I would say absolutely not if I found some individual in that race who I think is worth starting family with. So I had no, in principle, objection to it. Though, given my preferences, I think it was always more likely they would be white. Um, it was, it, I had no, in principle, objection to it. And yet here I am, starting, uh, uh, you know, moving in with you, making the progress towards starting a family with someone who is exactly the sort of traditional stereotype that a lot of more ethnocentric people in Cabal or elsewhere would, would want for themselves, would recommend. I didn't really mind, and yet here I am doing it. And a lot of them, one way or the other, aren't. And I'm not saying that that's to blame. I mean, I got lucky to find the person I did, but I don't know. I wonder if they, a lot of them, I wonder if they really mean it. I wonder if they wanted to put their money where their mouth is. The whole idea of, well, what, you want a white ethno state? That means you have to date white women. And suddenly like, oh, nope, nope, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> Brown femboys instead, <laughs> which a lot of them actually prefer. Uh, but how, how many of them are willing to put their money where their mouth is and actually find the right person from a stock of people, most of which are kind of unbearable these days? <laughs> but yeah, I, uh, it's, it's nice, actually. Um, what Mocha and I have is um, is like eighty to ninety percent of the way to just like an exactly traditional relationship and and you know, moving up to a family situation. It's very nice. And I, as I said, I was even I, I wasn't even sort of aiming for exactly something that traditional. I wasn't aiming for it. I was perfectly happy to have it. I wasn't aiming for it necessarily. I got very lucky. And but like that's what it is. It's it's attrition. Um, You've got to keep trying things. It's not a matter of, because I've told this story uh, many times, but um, there was a, an experiment done with like a pottery class where one half of the class were told, make one pot, but you spend all of your time working on making the best pot you can. Just high quality pot, just quality. That's all you're going for. And the other half of the group were told, just make as many pots as you can. Don't mind, don't worry about the quality. Just make more pots, make as many pots as you can. And the group that was making many pots made better pots. At the, at the end of the process, their pots were better than the group that made the high quality pot once. Now, I, th I think this was a real thing that happened, but even if it is apocryphal, I've seen other examples that indicate this to me, that the iterative process for development is the best one. Now, there are some cases where you iterate in the wrong direction for too long and you have to sort of wrench it back. And planning, even during the iterative process, is important. So I'm not being absolutist here, but iterative is important. The same thing is true with relationships. You cannot assume that any single example will be the one. But you, you keep trying with each of them. And if, if, you, if it fails, you try again. If it fails, you try, like, try again. There's no other way with relationships or with lots of other things than just you just keep trying. You just don't stop. And you give yourself more opportunities. You try to put yourself in situations where you'll have more chances, um, but you never assume it, it's, you're just going to hit it first try. I got very lucky, but this is still my like, sixth relationship. So it's, it's iterative. Um, but that's the best, the best advice I can give. It's, you're, you're, you're gonna, you, you're not, you, you shouldn't try to micro-optimize before you've like, macro-optimized. The macro-optimization, <coughs> the basic optimization, aside from making yourself worthy of a relationship, is just being somewhere where the kind of woman you like would be and sort of integrating into that community, having a reason to be there and having friends there who are worthwhile, who validate your worth. Because a lot of what women go for is you're integrated into a group that they respect. Sometimes that's wider society. Sometimes it's some club they're involved in. Sometimes it's some political movement, whatever else. If you're integrated into a group, you have friends there who can sort of validate you. And aside from your own qualities being good, that will work. And then you can beginning conversation. The part that was always more difficult for me was beginning the conversation. And I can't really give much good advice on that. But um, if you can find yourself in the situation where they're available, then you can force yourself to eventually begin one. You can you know, go, go through enough of them that eventually you'll be able to. So uh, don't, uh, don't ever give up hope on that chat. If you think that you are not 
eligible, not not like genetically worthy of love. You, you, you based on some stereotype, based on some belief, based on whatever else. Disabuse yourself of that notion and just keep trying no matter what. Because I'm pretty sure that anyone on the planet could find someone who they could at least be happy with, if not start a family with. And I don't think any of you in here are anywhere near the sort of bottom tier. You know, and we're talking actual bottom tier of, of men who you know, maybe there isn't someone for them. Like, uh, like uh, you know, uh, comprehensive cripples or um, people who refu- have refu- refu- have refused to shower for years or um, people who, who like, uh, who, who were like women on first sight, you know, even then. <laughs> but, you know, it, none of you are near the, the very lowest for that. So if you, if you don't feel hopeful, instead feel hopeful. <laughs> At least instead keep trying. I would like all of you to succeed in, uh, in, um, in relationship. At least to the extent that I feel I have now. All right. Um, Dekras, there's no exaggeration. A guy I used to work with when he met who would become his wife on the beach, his first words were, how's it going, tits? No, see, saying something like that will filter out a lot of women who will just say, ew, you awful misogynist. But it's a high risk, high reward thing, because if if you found the person who doesn't respond negatively to that, you have endeared yourself to them significantly by being very confident in a way they find funny. That's not actually a, that's actually quite a good idea. If there are any red lines in a relationship that you will not cross, like you will not be in a relationship with a feminist, and that's kind of understandable because they wouldn't want to be in a relationship with you. If you know that there are some things that will not work, then you could play to that and it might be a good way of filtering. Now, the whole idea of, like, do they have enough of a sense of humour to accept being called tits? There are some women who you could get in a relationship with who would sometimes have that, that uh, enough sense of humour, but not always, and that could still work out. So that's risky. But if you're, if you're determined to get only the best, or if you're just irreverent enough to want to say that, that can still work. That can still work. So, yeah, um, be brave, be confident, be... Uh, be uh, 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 courageous, but demonstrate that it's easy to live as you do. Demonstrate that you have a lot of spare energy. Um, demonstrate that you are uh, comfortable being who you are. Th- th- this kind of thing. It- it's a little things that build it up. It's-, it's the same set of little things that also build up to social change as well. <laughs> Marvel says average cabal like GF requirements. Female, optional, white, optional. <laughs> yeah. He says, I don't get it. The guys who went for the best pot made less good pots than the guys who went for mass production cheap pots. How? Because the people that iterated, every time they made a new pot, they learned from the last time how to make it better the next time. And so every time they made a new one, they took those improvements to make the pot better. And so in the end, it was, it was better. Now, you may think they were, they were trying to make multiple. Why did they bother trying to make it better? Well, that's the point, is the iterative is so powerful that even if you're not trying to make it better, you can. Because people learn from their mistakes. Believe it or not, there's, a lot of you probably are in the sort of autistic mindset that you can have a perfect plan. Well, in pure hypothetical, you can, but in reality, you never can. Um, there's too many factors to take into account, too many unexpected. And so what you need to do instead is try to uh, make the process formulaic if you want to get the best results. And you do that by trying, revising, trying, revising. Funnily enough, kind of like a waveform. Back to my talking point that they're everywhere. The birth and decay process is everywhere. You can can find analogies to that almost everywhere. Uh, Yeah, Wolf says agile type programming methodologies. I don't know much about agile, but I think in principle it could work. As far as I understand, the problem is that people don't do it properly. <laughs> Kitty says, Uzlu's advice for getting a good relationship? Sexual harassment. Yes, by some modern definitions. Some people in the world today would define flirting as sexual harassment, at least sometimes. Um, if, you, if you say something along the lines of uh, uh, nice legs, then some women are going to interpret that as sexual harassment, but in ages gone by, that would be interpreted as a compliment, and thus flirting. It literally is a compliment. To think that you can go up to, per- to, go up to a person, give them a sincere, honest compliment, and be arrested for it. 
That is insane. Make no mistake. If you're, especially if you're younger, if you've grown up during the culture war, this is not normal. And it's probably going to be very difficult to convey to you exactly what normal means. And bear in mind, I grew up during the 90s and, and early 2000s, so to me, normal is still not normal for what was normal before. And a lot of those standards are not wrong. They were uh, changed because of um, progressive hypotheses. We still haven't been, still haven't been uh, 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 cleared from our system, cleared like a virus. Theo says, don't worry, just because you're in prison doesn't mean nobody will want to date you. Just don't drop the soap. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I recommend that you don't go to prison. That will make it harder to find a worthwhile family. Um, but like, there are things that you can do, generally considered to be low-quality things, like crime, like wanton sex, like mm, bad hygiene, um, like not cleaning your room, which have a sort of a cumulative effect of just making you less worthy as a, uh, as a, as a person, not just because the woman has like these arbitrary stats, no, but because it'll reflect in how you behave. Um, so, and of course there are certain types of women who will like those things, but they're not necessarily the best for building a family with. Um, the reason that, uh, a lot of, the reason that family values can do to conservative is because humans, Humans have all these options, all these temptations to go in wild directions, um, non-conservative directions, you could even say degenerate directions, um, where you have the option to do those things, and they can be exciting in the moment, but I think evolution has, has deigned that we follow the challenge of, yeah, but don't. You can... But let's see if you cannot, because if you do those things, then it demonstrates to people, and it demonstrates through your resultant conduct, that you value short-termism over long-termism, and evolution selects hard against that. So if you can be the kind of person who clearly, in how you conduct yourself, and also truly, deeply, value long-termism over short-termism, i.e., don't go for degenerate stuff, don't do things that have uh, an immediate like pleasure value, but no long-term benefit. If you can stick on the path of the long-term benefit stuff and the conservative stuff, you can still enjoy things in life, but you will have a much better life as a result of doing so. Now, this is coming from someone, me, who used to be more leftist, more um, uh, open to this stuff, more willing to say, yeah, be degenerate, what's the downside? And I'm not presenting this as some moral conviction that I've had since birth. I'm not presenting this because I, I want people to be controlled, because I have some 1950s-oriented vision of the world I want to impose upon everyone, or because I think that uh, degeneracy is icky. I'm saying this because it appears to be true. Because evolution has, and not just, it's not like a person saying, I'm personifying the universe, nature, life, works better this way. So, if you want to be successful, you are going to have to resist temptation quite a lot.